What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to take a little bit of a look at some white cards. There are a few white Digimon that have gone and been revealed. And there's a bit of a thing going on in EX2. And that is that all of the white cards are weird and different and kind of confusing. But I say that with love and in a very fun way. So let's start off having a look at Calumon. Translations here from the lovely folks over at Ensan Gaming, as well as the lovely folks over at DigimonCard.dev. So what have we got here then? Well, we've got a free cost to play normally, 1,000 power Digimon, no level, and yeah, can't Digivolve from anything or into anything. It's very strange, right? It's a Digimon that's just kind of sits on its own doing its own thing i told you the white digimon in this set were weird and i very much meant it but when you play this card from your hand if you have a gilmon terriamon renamon or impmon in play reduce the cost to play it by two that's a legit one cost digimon and this isn't something like i mean let's take adro2 searcher as an example that was one whereby if you don't have another searcher in play, you can reduce the cost by two. But as soon as you do, it's, it's a free cost card. That is not the way that Calumon works here. This is as long as you have one of those four Digimon in play, it's always a one cost card. And Gilmon, you're talking red decks. Terrymon, you're talking green decks. Renamon, you're talking yellow decks. Impmon, you're talking purple decks. That is a lot of different options. And if you are playing any of those Digimon, you can just have this as a one-cost Digimon, and there's four in your deck, and you can just play them all as one-cost Digimon. That seems broken. Oh yeah, but it can't attack. Which kind of has to be the rule here, and you see this in the way a bunch of the cards are designed. This had to be the case. Because, quite frankly, you couldn't have a situation where you've got a one-cost to play Digimon that can attack the stack even if it's only got 1000 power you can just attack the stack get deleted who cares you've taken out a security card and if you can have four of them in your deck and they're all one cost to play nah too good so sure you get one cost cards and that is genuinely awesome but a digimon cannot attack and that's very important but on your turn when your digimon digivolves you may rest this digimon to gain a memory draw a card and give one of your Digimon 3,000 power until the end of this turn. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we play Calumon. It's not any good for attacking. It's not any good for taking out security or taking out Digimon. It doesn't do that stuff. That is not what this Digimon does. What this Digimon does do is just give you a boost like all over the field. Gaining memory, drawing cards gaining power this is awesome this is exactly the kind of stuff we should all be getting pretty gosh darned excited about this is extremely cool ladies and gentlemen this is something i think we can all be pretty gosh darn happy about you just did evolve anything you take anything and did evolve it into anything and then you gain a memory, so the evolution essentially costs one less. And you draw a card, and you give one of your Digimon an extra 3,000 power. Bearing in mind, this is only a one cost to play. This has got to be a serious consideration. Now, again, deck space is going to be the big issue here. But if you can find space in your deck, this is going to have to be a serious consideration for any deck playing any of those four Digimon. Because even though you can't attack and it's only got 1,000 power, and let's be clear, they are significant downsides. The fact that you can draw and gain memory and boost your other Digimon. Like, I cannot be the only one that thinks this is extremely cool. And I'm sure I'm not, because this is extremely cool. And now we need to move on and look at, well, frankly, more of those Reapers. ADR, call them what you will, ladies and gentlemen. There are a bunch of them. And there's two more which have gone and been revealed. And these are making just an absolutely ridiculous deck that doesn't really make a huge amount of sense. But I really want it to be good and weird because that would make me happy. So what we've got here is another couple of them. We've got ADR04 Bubbles 
an ADR 07 practice head. So they do seem to be filling in all of the numbers. So ADR 04 bubbles have got a free cost to play normally, 3,000 power. So it's a pseudo level 3, but let's be clear, it's not a level 3. It has no level, it cannot digivolve into anything, and it cannot digivolve from anything. But it's a security card. And the security says that you may put one of your ADR 02 searches in play, or in your hand, at the bottom of your Mother D Reaper, as an evolution source. Now remember that Mother D Reaper is a Digitama, of all things, which is, frankly, a little bit weird. But we have a bunch of skills that revolve around this. So, for instance, we could take a little bit of a look at Reaper, which is the first one of these we saw. And it's a 20 cost Digimon, but you can trash the bottom 7 Digivolution cards of one of your Mother D Reaper to set the play cost of this card to zero. So we need to get a whole bunch of Evolution cards under our 15,000 power Digitama. Yes, this deck is as nuts as it sounds, and this is absolutely one way to do so. It's an option. Is it perfect? No, obviously not. But it's not a bad option, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a bad option at all. Of course, we saw Yuri the other day that when you suspend it, you can reveal five cards on top of your deck and play a searcher from among them to the bottom of your Mother D Reaper's Digivolution source. Remember, you can play as many searcher as you like, up to 50, which is the limit of your deck, which is pretty gosh darn good. And then we can look at Gatekeeper. When your Mother D Reaper has six Digivolution sources or more, all of your opponent's Digimon get security attack minus one. So this deck is really building around trying to make sure that you've got a lot of Evolution sources under your Mother D Reaper so that you can go nuts and use all of these redonkulous skills. It's kind of the point. So yeah, this is another way to get an Evolution source under and I love it. Sure, it's a security skill, so this has got to come out as a security card. And even then, if it comes out as a security, but you don't have a searcher in play or in your hand, you have to fail it anyway. But when this works, it's awesome. But also, you can just play it and then put a searcher from either in play or from your hand at the bottom of one of your Mother D Reaper as its evolution source. So it doesn't just work as a security, it also works as a general skill. But again, you've got to have a searcher in play, or you've got to have one in your hand in order to take full advantage of this. But it's another way of being able to get these cards out, and get these cards under, and then use all those other skills, which is really, really good. It is all you're aiming for here, and frankly... This seems really, really cool. And then we've got ADR 07 Paratus Head. Six cost to play normally, 3,000 power, which doesn't even really match with any general level. It's a, it's a little bit weird, all right? It's quite expensive for the power. It's very expensive for the power. But again, it, 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 these are just Digimon that you're hard casting because there's not much else you can do with it. So it's one of those kind of smile and nod and get on with your day things, I suppose. But we've got a skill here that looks really rather fun. What we've got is, and I should mention all of our translated proxies come from the lovely folks at DigimonCard.dev. During your main phase, while you have a Mother D Reaper in play, you may rest this Digimon to delete one of your opponent's Digimon with power less than or equal to this Digimon's power. Now it is a little bit sad that you've only got 3000 power, but you can see where you're coming from. It is important to note that Searcher has an inheritable skill that gives all of your Digimon with D-Reaper in their traits an extra thousand power. And remember, although there isn't a way to Digivolve into or out of this, we do have the Mother D-Reaper Digitama, which allows you to put Searchers under it with various other skills like we've seen. So essentially you're using your skills to put Searcher under, and every Searcher that is under a Mother gives an extra 1,000 power. So sure, you start off with very low power. You start off with 3,000 power, which is obviously very, very low. But the theory is here that if this deck runs like it should, then you start getting a bunch of Reaper under all of your mother. And then when you've got that rolling, you actually get a huge power boost. And, you know, we, we got skills here that refer to having seven evolution sources under a mother. Well, that would make this a 10,000 power Digimon. 
And if this is a 10,000 power Digimon, then during your main phase, as long as you've got a Mother D Reaper, and again, if you don't have a Mother, then you won't have any Evolution Source searches to actually bust your power up anyway. But as long as you do, every turn, every one of these just deletes one of your opponent's Digimon, and that can add up really quickly. If you've got enough power going on here, you could just sit there and be wrecking your opponent's board. You could get three or four of these out, and then every turn, your opponent loses three or four Digimon, which really just comes down to your opponent's going to play one or two during their turn, and then you're going to delete them. And you can lock your opponent out here. Now, we're asking a lot. We're asking to have a mother in play with a bunch of evolution source searchers so that you can boost up your power. I understand that. And you'll need a couple of these in play. I understand it. But you can legit lock your opponent out of the game here by just making sure that every time they play a Digimon, you can just delete it using this. And especially in the early game, if you can get rolling fast enough, and that is a huge if. But if you can get rolling fast enough, you can legitimately have, you know, a couple of these out. And every time your opponent plays a Digimon, you just wait for it to go back to your turn and delete them. And it's awesome. I think there's still a couple of these which we haven't seen. It's going to be super interesting to see how this shakes out fully. But frankly, we are heading into a very, very fun deck here with a lot of good options. And all we've seen today is just more ways to get those searches under Mother and a way to potentially lock your opponent out the game by just not letting them play any Digimon, and that is frankly hilarious. But I want to know what you think, so let me know in the comment section, would you get us? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.